Who is the total stranger you will never forget and why? 30 years ago, I was 17, with dreams of becoming a music teacher. It was a Saturday morning in my small city, and I was walking a couple blocks from the library to the mall to buy myself lunch. On the way, I ran into a woman, who looked like she was in her 30s but also much older. Like she lived a tough life. She asked if she could have a dollar to buy a cup of coffee. I told her if she walked with me, I'd buy her lunch. Over the course of our walk and lunch, she told me she was a music teacher. Her father was diagnosed with cancer so she moved in with him to take care of him. She had to take him to so many medical appointments that she couldn't work full time. So she became a substitute teacher instead. Her income dropped and was inconsistent. And they couldn't afford to pay their phone bill and therefore she couldn't be called for work. I could tell that she was being honest. Based on the mutual music teachers we knew and the details she gave. That was the day that I truly understood that sometimes good people do all the right things but just have shitty circumstances. And I realized the importance of not passing judgment and instead showing compassion. I ended up studying music ed but not becoming a teacher. Instead, I've dedicated my career to working at nonprofits that help people. Guy in a witch's costume drawing hearts on the sidewalk with strawberries. That I saw on my way to work. That night he got on the streetcar, different clothes. Mostly, and sat down beside me to chat. His name is Kevin and he told me all about his theory that keeping in farts causes you stress and cancer. Which is why he does crack. For the stress you know? Called me a nice person and told me not to let the man get me down. The next year he ran for mayor and got over 800 votes putting him in 8th place out of 13, which means 5 candidates, mostly lawyers and civil servants, got fewer votes than the crack fart witch. Well I guess I forgot about him in one way. I was in a motorcycle accident where a car swerved head on at me. And I took a major blow to the head. Thankfully I always wore a helmet. So that took 95% of the blow. But I was still understandably very shook. I barely remember getting hit. And then bam I was just laying there on the ground almost blacked out. Drifting from consciousness to unconsciousness. And this dude in a company van pulled over asking what the fuck was wrong with the car that hit me since he saw it all happen. And the dude ran over to me. Helped me up to my legs, I remember falling over once after he picked me up, and drove me to the nearest hospital in his company van, it was only a couple of blocks away. So no need to call an ambulance. I remember crying and repeatedly saying I'm so sorry for no reason. Something in my brain obviously fried from the fall. And then I noticed my arm was bleeding all over his seat. Which made me say sorry even more and he laughingly said it's okay. The company will pay for that. Then we arrived. And he took me to the ER and waited with me for a doctor to come. The doctor checked me up. Took the helmet off, which I still wore for the whole trip. Which is very important until a doctor can make sure it's fine to take it off and made sure I wasn't seriously hurt. Meanwhile the dude that helped me is still sitting in the waiting room for me. I took a couple of x-rays because my arm hurt a lot. But it was just a hairline crack in my bone. So nothing major. But this still took like an hour to get the pictures developed. Etc. After that I was free to go. And I saw the dude still sitting there. Waiting for me. And not just that. Turns out directly after he left me with the doctors. He drove to the accident scene and took photos of everything for insurance purposes. And also called the police. He also propped up my motorbike against a nearby wall to protect it from more damage. And then he went back to the ER. Waited for me. And then texted all pictures and information to me. And he also said he'd witness in case the woman that hit me tried to pull something legal against me. And then he drove me home and helped me into my bed. The dude literally took like 3 hours of his own time when he was supposed to be working. And helped me with everything instead. And I never even got his name. Big ramble. I know. I've just never talked about this before. My memory was so hazy from the concussion. But it all came back when I started writing this. Pro cake decorator here. I was asked to make a welcome baby cake. They then immediately asked what the cancellation policy was because they were not sure that the baby was going to make it. I never wanted to make a cake so badly in my life. They picked up the cake. This was years ago. I think about that little girl all the time. I hope she is thriving. The random guy at the bus stop when I was about 14 who came up to me and said don't ever try heroin. You'll love it. And I never did. 
A homeless woman I saw every now and then on my way to the grocery store. She asked for money once and I said I'm sorry. But I'm too broke to give her some. She memorized and never asked me again but we greeted each other friendly every time we met for several years. One day I met her. She hugged me out of nowhere and told me she found a proper job and got an apartment and she's spending the day in front of the grocery store to let the people know she knows from seeing for so long so they won't be worried. This was one of the most joyful moments in my life and I sometimes think about her when I'm in that area. I used to live there a few years after that and I never saw her again. Back when I worked retail I got Bell's palsy, it's a reaction to a viral infection that freezes half your face. Just imagine not being able to taste. Close your eye. Feel temperature or anything at all on only one side of your face. Closing parenthesis dot. It can last weeks and even several months depending. There is no cure but to slowly wait for it all go back to normal. So suffice to say, I couldn't take the undetermined time off of work to wait it out. One eye wouldn't close. I always looked like I was half surprised because my eyebrow refused to move and I had a bad lisp because half my tongue felt like it didn't exist. This was all accompanied by a mind-numbing headache for weeks. Not to mention the stairs while out in public. I was sitting at the register about a month in and a man walked up with a beanie on and after the transaction I asked him if he wanted a bag for his items. But with the lisp it was nearly impossible to say it right. It was a rough day. In pain and couldn't stand another person giving me that look that I started to tear up. But instead of pity the look he gave me was one of understanding. He pulled off his beanie and explained that he had alopecia which caused all of his hair to fall out. He sat and talked with me for a bit. Told me that I was incredibly brave because he knew what it felt like when people stared. He shook my hand. Walked out the door and I never saw him again. But I'll never forget him. I hope he's doing well. I had a bad day. Missed two buses. I was furious when I came to my stop. Knowing that I had to wait for another two hours. An old man was sitting there. Enjoying some chocolate and Kami told me. Anger mostly means you have a lot of sorrow. With that one sentence he made me realize how irrelevant my anger was. I calmed down quickly. Thanks old man. I was on the London Underground many years ago on a train that was just pulling away. In a fleeting moment I made eye contact with a guy on the platform and he started smiling and running alongside the train comedy style waving to me until the end of the platform. It still makes me smile thinking about it now open mouth smile. I just got this cheap generic shirt from Walmart with a quote on it. I don't remember what it was. I went inside a gas station with it on and this guy came out of the alley and stared at me. He then started taking his shirt off and laughing. I was confused and scared. He was shorter than me but he looked like he had crack head strength. He then pointed to a massive tattoo of the exact thing in my shirt. He then said, woot woot, patted me on the back and walked out the door. Four years ago. A cold October as I rode home on my bike my lungs felt like they were about to freeze up due to the rapid breaths of cold air. I was maybe a mile away from home when I collapsed. It was quite late too. There weren't any cars in sight and I was about to pass out. I don't know if it was seconds or minutes later but another biker. A guy maybe in his 30s saw me and rushed over. He called paramedics and I was rushed to the hospital. I was put on a breather and covered with a heated blanket. The biker is the one who called my family members and my dad was the first one to show up. I made a recovery a few hours later and I paid that biker a literal thousand dollars which was probably near my whole account balance back then but it was worth it. If it wasn't for that biker. I don't know what would have happened. His name is Jacob and we are great friends now. I was a kid and a gentleman at the next table in a restaurant could speak six languages or so. He gave examples of a few. I was so impressed and since then wanted to learn languages. I speak six fluently myself now. Plus a couple more at a basic level. So it had a real positive impact. I've shared this story before. But I'll never forget the impact this experience had on me. When I was a kid we didn't have a lot of money. So we often shopped at thrift stores. What I loved about that was that you could get 10 books for a dollar. So I would plant myself in front of the book section and make piles of which one I wanted to get and then decided after I'd gone through them all. One day an older lady saw me sitting with my piles and asked if I liked to read. I told her I did and showed her a few of the books I found that I liked. She smiled and then pulled a dollar out of her purse. Handed it to me and said. Promise me that you'll keep reading. 
I was so happy and immediately stood up and said that I would. She smiled and walked away and I went back to my piles able to pick out an extra 10 books to take home. It was just a small act of kindness for her. But for me having a random stranger encourage my love of reading and making me promise to never stop definitely had a lot to do with my continued love of reading. This was over 20 years ago. But I still think of her whenever I buy a new book. The old dude playing a saxophone while skiing down the mountain. That dude was doing black diamonds. Moguls. And other crazy stuff while wailing on his sax. I only saw him that one time. When I was 17 I went to a friend's 18th birthday party. I was exactly one week away from turning 18 so stayed sober for the night. Girlfriend was 18 and had a bit of a drink so I was just making sure she got home okay. Anyway got the train home with this guy and his very drunk friend. They'd been in town for the night and started chatting with us. He asked why I wasn't drunk on the last train home and I just explained to him and he was impressed I guess. Anyway I went to get off the train and the more sober guy gave me a tenor and said your dad will buy you your first legal drink. I want to get you your second. Enjoy your birthday next week. Never forgot it. Was my first experience on the drunk train and still the best. Some guy on bake stopped me and a friend of mine. We were like 15, in the road and talked about how he's Jesus for like 15 minutes. We'll never forget that guy. I met Jesus Christ. First time in San Francisco and riding a cable car. There are all these warnings printed about keeping your arms and legs inside the car at all times. So, we're going up a hill and there is another cable car coming down the hill on my side. And I make eye contact with a woman on that car. As we passed each other, we both held our hands out and high-fived each other. A lovely Japanese man who took me all the way to my correct station when I got horribly lost in my first month of living in Japan. I had horribly broken Japanese and he was so patient and kind. Especially as I cried and that is not really a done thing. I'm not a pretty crier either. A lovely lady at the cemetery saw me visiting my grandmother's grave. As of described. She came over with flowers intended for her husband's grave and shared them with me, placing them near grandmother's headstone. Her kindness and generosity touched me at a moment that was especially meaningful. I'll never forget her. Some homeless crackhead. He walked up to my window and asked for money to buy some booze and I said I didn't have any but appreciated the honesty. He then said he was lying and wanted to buy crack. Then proceeded to talk to me for the next five minutes against my will. LOL. It was when I was a beginner for driving. I winded up crashing with car that was in front of mine. And that wasn't even moving just stopped at the jam. I was terrified when I recognized the horse symbol on the red flat fancy car that I crashed with. Totally 100% my fault. And he came out of the door. He looked like around 35 or so and looked at me. Pale faced 18 yo boy. He said like, been not long since you got the license. Dude? Haha. Ha. I used to get the crash accident a lot too when I got my first car. But be careful. You could be dead if it's a big accident. This time. You're lucky. You can go now. I don't say you're paying for this at all. Just be careful from now on. See ya. Quote dot. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to drop a like. If you would like to see more content like this in the future. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified about future videos. Now check out one of these interesting videos.